We are the tide from the north. We're brave and we're bold. Defeating our rivals never gets old. Making our way to the Big Sky Conference. Watch out, cause here comes the silver and gold. the club for the vandals of idaho welcome back tribe from the north brave and bold to the official unofficial podcast of your idaho vandals and your vandal affiliate on the big sky podcast network i'm your host chris hammond and with me today it's the first time i've gotten to say it in a while the martin trombone capone how you doing martin i'm doing good chris how about yourself Good, good. It's National Signing Day. Always oh, yeah. an enjoy, enjoyable day for recruiting geeks like you, uh, myself, and you, uh, as well as Rusty Kramer over at the Eagle Power Hour. We see you, miss you, bud. Hopefully, uh, your class is doing as good as ours. Mm-hmm. Um, big day for the Vandals. Anybody that geeks out to this stuff as much as we do, obviously, already knows that Paul Petrino's already had an interview. Colin Clark asked him some questions. If you're looking for him to kind of just chat and talk it up and and do Paul Petrino stuff. That's what that's for. We're going to do a very loose structured today, kind of talk about the class as a whole as, as compared to the individuals. As we'll get into, class isn't complete. There's still a couple of days in this signing period. We also have the final signing period kind of back uh, in, in February. So we've got time to kind of solidify this class. So we'll do more individual breakdowns as we get time to lo- like learn these players, and we're going to try to do some pieces along the way. But that's kind of how the structure will work today. Probably a quick 30-minute just get our thoughts on the initial kind of part of this class. So with that, this episode, like every br- episode, is brought to you by Montucky Cold Snacks. Oh, fuck. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Ain't nothing like cracking a Montucky Cold Snack. An ultra-refreshing light beer born in majestic big sky country. <laughs> this part is when you crack a snack and get it back. Montucky Cold Snacks. It's oh, back the whole even right here in Idaho. Sporting organizations like the CW Hogs and Martin's Carpet Cleaning. <laughs> Yeehaw, that's freaking awesome. Montucky Cold Snacks, the Light American Logger for Pow Pow Rippers, Gator Wranglers, Pony Riders, and Badass Do-Gooders. Visit MontuckyColdSnacks.com today to find out how to get your ass from snacks. See, it spilled everywhere because it, it was it was like a Coors Light or something. That's why. Uh, no, I had them on Tucky just I sitting know, in I the thought. freezer trying to. I... Don't but... set these things in the freezer for too long. No, definitely not. But uh, we got also shameless plug after our plug for uh, Montucky. We've got um, our friends over at the Montana Mint have got some really good recruiting hats that you can buy, and they're doing a holiday sale right now. Uh, that kind of fit National Signing Day. To all those commits out there that committed to the University of Montana, Montana State, remember, there's no vacancy in Montana. They don't want you. Come to Idaho. And there's no reason. Do not feed the bison. Do not go to North Dakota State. Come to Idaho. Start the dynasty. Paul Petrino and the boys, the tribe from the North, brave and bold. Uh, Montana Mint, thank you for creating that free advertisement for us. And all of you guys out there, another great uh, Big Sky Podcast Network member. Go check it out. Their store's really cool, and they didn't pay us for that. That's just an honest plug because, well, I bought all three of their hats, so I don't want to be the only loser in Idaho with them. Uh, anyways, Martin, into the recruiting here. Mm-hmm. Um, big takeaways. We'll just run through the list real quick, and then we'll kind of just bounce points off very unstructured yeah. here. Um, I want to start a little bit. So we're going to start with Jay Sean Williams. He was actually our first commit even though he's at the bottom of this list. And he was big piece. Uh, he's a wide receiver slash corner out of San Diego, it's Lincoln High School. He also played with uh, Zama, Zama J. Duncan, who we'll get to a lot in this, at 5'10", 180 pounds, also a cornerback from San Diego, California. San Diego, California. Um, so there's those two. Then we have Gabe Benton, who's a 6'1", 225-pound running back from Stockton, California. You have... Broughton McLeod, who's a 6'1", 180-pound quarterback from St. George, Utah. You have Alicia or Alicia Cummings, 5'9", 180 pounds out of Waco, Texas. Uh, then you have Keyson Evans, wide receiver, 6'2", 175 pounds out of Compton, California. Then you have Logan Harrison, 6'7", 290 out of Boise, Idaho, Centennial High School, which I always thought was Meridian. Guess it's not. Uh, Joshua Jones, 5'10", 
182 pound cornerback out of Spring, Texas. He's a transfer from UTSA uh, and Tyler Junior College. He'll be eligible immediately. Uh, Elijah King, freshman, 6'4, 200 pound safety out of San Diego. You also have Elijah Lilly, a formerly from San Bernardino, California, but is a transfer from New Mexico, also eligible right away. You have Giovanni McCoy, uh, big time 6'1, 160 pound quarterback out of the Los Angeles area. Um, I've seen Gardena. I've seen uh, something else. I don't remember. He's had a couple different things on him. Lakewood. That was it. Lakewood. Um, but it says Lawndale High School. Um, and then a really cool one in Colt Musgrave. 6'2", 215-pound linebacker out of Bend, Oregon. So there's a bunch of names. Maybe some faces. According to Paul Petrino, a lot of these guys other than um, – the two gray shirts, which he plans on red shirting. So at that point, you're looking at Logan Harris and Crouton McLeod. He expects to red shirt as well on top of their gray shirt year. Mm-hmm. He said everybody else has got a real shot to play, including Giovanni McCoy. That being said, I feel like Giovanni McCoy is going to be the uh, replacement for uh, CJ Jordan or the backup plan because CJ Jordan transfers at, at some point so uh but it was cool to see two quarterbacks we'll also get into some other stuff um some points i kind of want to highlight in the signing that's 12 in the class we went three wide receivers uh call it two to three cornerbacks because one of them could play either way they're going to test them in a couple different you got one safety two running backs an offensive lineman two quarterbacks and a linebacker uh, on that you know i think martin you're looking at we, we knew it going into this. We had um, Jalen Hoover grad transfer. Mm-hmm. Dave Eppinger enter the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had Cedric Thomas graduate. Mm-hmm. And we had Lloyd Hightower graduate. Mm-hmm. Our secondary was basically going to be brand new. So um, we've got some guys in like Majib Rufai and some other dudes. Yeah, that we the grad transfer from Montana. Yeah, uh, yeah. Darian Nash. Yep. Yeah. So we do have some dudes, which is what's nice. But the question is kind of uh, was was going to be how good are these brand new guys going to be? Um, and it, it looks like we're just making sure we're adding depth. We got three dudes mm-hmm. in the secondary, which is I mean it's never good. Uh, it's never bad because Idaho hasn't really ever, at least as far as I've been alive, had a <laughs> strong secondary. Yeah. So I'm not saying we've ever had a bad secondary. We've never really had a strong secondary. So I, I'm not all, like Legion of Boom quality. Well, nobody has. Yeah. <laughs> the Seahawks don't even have that anymore. So um, I mean, what are kind of your takeaways on the amount of signings and who we signed? Is anybody you're act- extraordinarily excited for? Uh, overall, it's kind of I would say inverse of last class where we had a. Or we like the last two of January or the last the last signing class in 2019, 2020 with uh we where we loaded up on offensive linemen this year it's we're loading up on DBs and it's never a bad thing to have just to keep adding depth and adding players that look like they can play right away. Yeah. I think the one I'm looking forward to the most is uh we'll state the obvious is uh Joshua <laughs> Elijah Lilly, just because like I've everybody said he's fast and he knew he played cornerback and wide receiver at New Mexico. It'll be interesting to see what role he plays, kind of if he's probably that complimentary piece to complimentary piece to Cottrell this upcoming spring and next fall semester. Yeah, uh, it sounds like that, and that's actually a good point. It, it's nice that you bring him up. Uh, talk, listen to Paul Petrino talk about it. Um, he, you think about it, we've had speed guys come in. Chauncey Smart didn't end up pulling it down. Yeah. Uh, Kevin McGuire, I believe was his name, a couple of years ago, who suffered the injury in spring camp, uh, yeah. and then we never saw him. It looks like this is our attempt to get that speed guy, which is probably something that we could say maybe that's why we haven't seen Paul Petrino's offense kind of be what he wants. He's been in search of that speed guy, and he's lost the last two speed guys. So – I think this is a really good bolster. He's eligible immediately. We did learn, so if you follow our live blog today, I'll take the blame for that one point. I said it looked like some of these guys were going to be able to play right away. That was incorrect. How they had their spreadsheet on Go Vandals was confusing. It said Jan 20 and Fall 21. 
which made me think they're eligible for the January 20 season and the fall 21 season. Campus. But none of them are eligible to play except the transfers. So uh, Lily is eligible right away, as well as Joshua Jones. So we have a transfer in a corner. Then you also have last year's transfer in a corner from Montana, and Darian Nash. So we have the corners solidified. Now you're looking at who can step in at safety. We have some pieces between Majib, uh, Zach Borish. Uh, I know I'm probably forgetting who's probably the leader right now in the clubhouse, but um, some guys. So – all in all, we needed to show up our secondary, and we did. I saw Paul get a little bit of hate for going, wow, um, like no no linemen in this. One offensive lineman, no defensive lineman. Last year, we went very linebacker and lineman heavy. So I think that's what you're getting out of this class is those spots are taken care of. They didn't lose any eligibility technically. Oh, yeah. This is viewed as an extension. View the 20 – 2020 class as an extension of the 2021 class because really springs a giant exhibition. So come fall 20, uh, fall 21, basically all those linebackers and linemen are going to be freshmen. So they're going to be paired in. So we didn't really need to add a sixth or seventh freshman yeah. lineman. Um, so it makes sense that we went this way, in my opinion. It's good also um, that at least it's another Idaho offensive line with hoping maybe one more on the way. Yeah, which uh, kind of went to my next point. Last year, I don't have the map in front of me. This is a very achy class. Uh, Texas and California. We only states we have multiple people from. Uh, ironically, we really doubled down on same schools and same uh, everything like that. Like you're looking, you got seven kids out of California, three out of the San Diego, out of San Diego, two of which were teammates. Which from everything we've heard, uh, Sam J. Duncan is the 247 Sports, second highest rated recruit Idaho has ever had commit to us. Sounds like part of the reason we got from poking around in people's sources, you know, feet on the pavement. Asking around. Yeah, ears to the wall. Um, he's pretty good friends with Jay Sean Williams, who's the, the – we, who we mentioned at the top was the first commit for Idaho in this class back in uh, – we've got it on here. July? April, April, July. Like July or something like that? Yeah. July. So very early commit. Uh, and then Zama J, it sounds like, also had – he had offers to Boise State, Oklahoma, Utah, Morgan State, Arizona State, and Arizona. However, it sounds like the Arizona schools both filled those positions and pulled the scholarship. Um, no news on Oklahoma, Utah, whatever. But, you know, I view it as people – like we got a little shade from some other people saying, well, they pulled the scholarship. Like They pulled the scholarship because he didn't commit. He just committed Idaho. Like – three days ago the problem was they filled the position it's a weird year unfortunately him game planning probably worked against him but i think he's going to find a home in idaho he's really going to like and he's going to go down possibly as one of those shiloh ko type players that we'll remember and when we do our in 2030 when we go back into our all decade team for that he's going to be one of those guys that will be a unanimous selection if you know he lives up to the potential but oh, yeah. uh, that, that, that was a big get for us. So it goes to show um, that. And then as well as, gosh, who was it? We got another guy. Is it is it McCoy? Somebody is out of – we have three people on the team from that high school, including uh, Cottrell Haywood. Yeah, oh, it's, uh, it's uh, Gabriel Benton or Gabe Benton. Gabe Benton, who's yeah. supposed to be the new Elijah Penny, 6'1", yeah. 225. Which is always never a bad thing to have is another Elijah Penny type running back. Yeah, and so that's where we're going. Like, Because I was going to say one of my other points in this is is we didn't have that <laughs> typical Petrino family class mm -hmm. where he likes to always talk about family. Uh, likes to go out and get, you know, brothers and, you know, uncles who's – or nephews of people who played on the team, et cetera. We didn't really get that this year. What we did get was kind of our connections. So you got using a guy at San Diego to land us our second highest pick ever, um, you know, that connection. Yeah. Uh, you have a connection at that high school in uh, looks like Stockton, California. Where yeah. Stag Petrell, High School, I think it's Stag something or just Stag High yeah, School. Stags or Stags. Uh, yeah. That's uh, Gabriel Benton, uh, Control Haywood, and those guys have come from. Um, you also look at the – quarterback that was a gray shirt last year in uh Utah. Where, yeah Crowton McLeod so Crowton McLeod was a gray shirt last year so he actually was part of last year's class but wasn't allowed to be announced um he is a guy who was a part of his 
dad or his uncle, I think it was his dad, was a part of coaching staffs with Paul Petrino throughout the years. He was at LSU when Paul was at Arkansas, and they kind of recruited against each other. So once again, he went out and got one of those coaches kids. We know how he likes that. It worked with the Ellis's. Um, so, you know, something that is still kind of up Paul's alley. Uh, so that was good. Uh, you, you also look at uh, the three guys. So, so yeah, so Keyshawn Evans is also supposed to gray shirt, it mm-hmm. looks like. Yeah, he was a gray shirt last year. He signed in. He signed in February, but he. he yeah. Tyler Webb, the quarterback yeah. out of Waco, is Paul can't talk about him because they can't talk about gray shirts. But uh, according to Tyler Webb's Twitter, he's gray shirting and committed. Um, that obviously Waco, Texas, which is where we got our other running back out of this mm-hmm. class. In uh, God, all these names are bouncing around on me. Elisha Cummings. Cummings, yes. Um, different high schools. Elijah went to three state, state state championships, only won one of them, but rushed for 195 yards his senior year. Um, but yeah, this thing you're looking, you got seven kids out of Texas, just or seven kids out of California, two kids out of mm-hmm. Texas, one out of Utah, one out of Oregon, one out of Idaho. Um, not exactly what I'd want to see yeah. from this kind of class, especially. You know, I, I just don't get it, and I've kind of quit trying to understand, like, Montana's recruiting methods. Um, Montana, for some reason, can recruit all these kids that have no – because, like, we posted your uh, conference rankings, which yeah. I'll pull up here in a second. Um, which are and, not up to date as of today. I have not done anything. Okay. But uh, on that. they uh, never get stars, and so people are always like, well, how come – these guys never – like, no one gives Montana any respect. And it's like, well, it's because you guys recruit people that just don't have star ratings. It's not that we're not giving you respect. It's just 247 can't give you respect because these guys aren't going to camps and getting rated and put in their their things. So when they commit, it just don't exist in their system. Um, so that's why you always see the Montana and Montana State, like, low, where Idaho is good. We, we're more of a national recruiter than those schools are. But it is kind of sad when you see we only got one – Idaho kid, and it's technically a gray shirt from last year. Yeah. Now we'll talk about there's, there's one some or two kids. more on the way. There's some kids unsigned. Um, mm-hmm. Paul said about three to four more is what he expects to add between now and you know the February um, signing. So we'll cover that here to probably end it on some predictions on or wants and predictions. Um, but any like kind of final takeaways here on what we have because like i said this isn't going to be a long podcast yeah. it, this is more initial reactions basic coverage and we'll do more in-depth breakdowns over the coming months on everybody mm-hmm. including maybe comparison pieces on the website but yeah. um, what are you like your main takeaways and i'll kind of hit my last couple main takeaways and then we'll kind of talk who still has offers outstanding and a big rumor that broke that we will probably end the show with that uh, we might have a another Zamaj Duncan may not be our number two for much longer. <laughs> yeah, I'd say my main takeaway is it the class it fills the needs that Idaho needs, right? That Idaho needed to fill. And I think for me, this recruiting class, like I think you take the spring, and these players aren't gonna play until fall. Most of them are not gonna play until fall 2021. But you kind of – it's just like a giant spring practice for a lot of these players, and it's going to be just another – it's going to be – I like it, and it's just there. It fills needs that they needed to fill. Yeah. It's like when you have – like when you're playing NCAA 14, it's like, oh, you need to – you should probably sign four cornerbacks or like three cornerbacks, something like that. It's like they feel, they got their goals. Yeah, and like we said, it, it's more you got to put all of these um, – this, this class and the last class together. But um, one thing I kind of wanted to touch on real quick is a lot of these guys, the problem. So last year, right, we were really big and Arizona was like our surprise state. We signed what four or five kids out of the state yeah. of Arizona. Uh, this year it appears to be, I guess, Texas. Yeah. Um, I guess that's like, I know Drew's it drew all over. No, not Drew Oliver. It's I know coach Oliver moved on and maybe that's why it moved we kind of maybe switched with coach Tracy coming in. Yeah. Um, which uh, coach Smith is the one who did all Southern California, obviously looking at this list, all Southern California kids. And I think he actually did the Stockton kid as well. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, shout out to him. Uh, I believe last year we said Brian reader was kind of our big winner. 
Uh, mm-hmm. This year, it's got to be Coach Vernon Smith. Awesome job recruiting. Oh, yeah. uh, love every single guy he got. So um, that's awesome. Because what a tough year to recruit to over Zoom. Oh, yeah. and everything. But um, so, yeah, those are your things. So your gray shirts, Crowton McLeod, Logan Harris, uh, and then you got the two immediates. So we're looking to do maybe three to four more. Uh, Paul Petrino said those three to four more expect two of them to be defensive linemen. So Paul is aware and it makes sense. You know, uh, Coyote is going to be in his last year. Um, Noah Ellis, I believe is in his last year. We're having that road truck. O'Connor or O'Connor might be, I know he's technically a linebacker, but you know, we run the three, four. Um, so you can recruit at the end and kind of play him as a linebacker. But, uh, you're looking at we're going to have that turnover. We have a really good front seven right now, yeah. arguably the best front seven in the FCS, arguably the best in the big sky, definitely the best linebacking core in the big sky. But those guys are going to start to turn over, and that's where you're going to see this start going, which is something we didn't touch on. I guess the one thing that Paul Petrino is very high on, we might have got the next Troy Anderson. Um, Musgrave out of Bend. Apparently played quarterback sophomore and junior year and just switched to linebacker. So they're going to play him at linebacker. You've got that guy. I mean, I'm not, hopefully as we've covered, we're stacked at quarterback. The oh, fact yeah. that we were just in a quarterback crisis a couple of years ago, couldn't keep anybody healthy, was worried. Even have we been in a quarterback crisis since Taylor Davis and Logan Bushnell had to come in really? I mean, Matt, I don't know. I mean, 2016 was a good year, but yeah. I mean, you look at who we have on the roster. Mm-hmm. We got two guys coming in now. We have, we already know we have Tyler Webb, gray shirting. So we have another you know, one guaranteed next year. Um, we're stocked at, at oh, yeah. quarterback. It's just hopefully one of these guys can play and they can develop them and um, we'll be good. But uh, I, I am kind of sad to see, like, happy to see Musgrave, Bend, Oregon. I'll consider that local. Like I always say, I say states that touch Idaho. So even like Nevada, yeah. local. We also, we had a really good year with Nevada last year with the uh, Fallon, uh, Nevada. I think we got McCormick, Sean yep. McCormick, and McCormick's. Yep. Uh, so we've had good years there. So we'll give Utah. Um, cool to get a kid out of St. George. So kind of like right out of Southern Utah's yeah. nest, if it's a word. I mean, that's where 60 states from, right? Or yeah. That, but they're yeah. like, they're like 50 miles or something apart. Yeah. So, yeah. um, it, it's just, but then again, is that really that hard to do? Um, <laughs> So that's kind of where I'm at with this class is I'm, I'm happy with it. I think it's good. Uh, coming in today, we were third in the big sky. And last year we finished third in the big sky in recruiting. Last year we finished, I believe, third so, in – what did we finish it. nationally last year? Like fifth? I want to say it was top five. Yeah, it was like either like fifth five. or sixth. And we came into today ranked seventh. Now, 247 is obviously it was a busy, busy, busy day for them. And unfortunately, being in the FCS, our stuff's not going to get touched for probably another day or two. They're making sure all the power five, your Georgia's, your top 25 recruiting classes are nailed out. Then they'll probably flush through the FCS stuff. So you're not going to see these rankings. So don't go in today and go, oh, we still held the number seven spot nationally. It's like, well, that could change. And looking at this list, I know Montana got like 19 commits. Don't know yeah. where in the scholarships coming from, but they did. So you know that's something to weigh in as well. But uh, all in all, Paul said it was going to be a small class, but it's a quality class. Uh, he literally said everybody but the two guys, who's, two of the gray shirts, um, probably have a shot to play. Which I don't think Giovanni does, but he did say quarterbacks develop differently. Um, so my takeaway is very happy with it. Glad we shirt up the secondary, even if these guys don't start. We needed the depth. Uh, glad to see we got another impact linebacker to keep that lineage going of Idaho being a linebacking school. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully we can knock Montana off as they go to Mon- like linebackers because, uh, well, we're about to have two linebackers in the league and they don't have any. But uh, quarterbacks, I mean, we're, we're doing good. Uh, I was very happy with it. Um, mm-hmm. But there are some guys outstanding, Martin. Yeah. Who – that has an offer outstanding. Do you think we'll sign with us? And who do you kind of hope? We'll are sign you with? talking like people that are committed or that haven't signed or just people that are both, both. We got, we got three to four spots. Your coach Petrino and sure. Vernon, we're going to close it out. You know, who are the guys you're going to go get to round out this class at 16? Uh, 
I'd say the first one I'd say is drive on down. If, if you could, I'd say drive on down to Eagle, Idaho, and see if you can get – is it – see if you can get – is it Tomasini? Yeah. Get him. Kind of get the other brother to come to Idaho. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of another – we kind of another fun – shore up the defense. I don't – I can't remember if he played out. I don't remember if he played outside linebacker or inside or whatever. That's kind of the that's kind of one. And I think if hopefully he hopefully it maybe he's officially announced, maybe someone like another Idaho player that's committed, Jacob Graves from Kuna, Idaho, would be another one. Did you just call it Kuna? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I there's a coffee company and that sounds like that too. Kona. I don't Kuna. know. <laughs> the the Kuna Cave man. That's fun. That's actually kind of funny. Throwback to last year, which for everybody watching, that was the actual signing day. It was the first time we did video. Uh, me trying to pronounce every single like Arizona and California uh, freaking town. Know, you trying to pronounce some of the Washington schools was funny too. Was like yeah. Stilicum? Stilicum. I still can't do Stilicum. Stilicum. I, can, <laughs> I can do Puyallup and Yallup. Chilealup. Pileup. Uh, <laughs> Cleelum. I can do all that. But. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so Washington's got some weird ones too, but uh, yeah, you were helping me out with the uh Spanish influenced names. Yeah. I was just murdering every luckily San Bernardino, and that was about as far as I had to go today. Yeah. But uh, anyways, sorry, I interrupted you. Who are your final like two? I think just those two, Brett, Brett, and Jacob are the two that I would maybe try and push for. That's it. So you'd round the class out at I'd say those two are mine too. If you wanna I think the other one maybe if you wanna maybe dip back into that uh Arizona school, I'd say maybe try and go after I think is it Kevin Squat Sotsky. I'm really butchering this. <laughs> this guy right here. Yeah. From Chandler. Kevin. Yeah. Yep. Um so I mean all right, then real quick, if that's your three. So you're you're looking, you know, we have for those of you that don't follow, if not, go to tubsoftheclub.com. You can see our list. We have this sheet available to you. You can click the hyperlinks, for instance, here. So what I'm going to bring up, here's a guy uh, in Tristan Flores, Flores that people are excited about, right? We uh, we have four, three to four spots open. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people who have officially told us at, God, just give me one of these. <laughs> somewhere <laughs> have officially told us that somewhere they were going to commit. We have their committed tweets linked. So this guy said he was committed November 21st. However, we look at this list today. He did not send it in. Paul Petrino told us we have three to four more spots. That's what kind of worries me because we have six guys outstanding on here. You and I talked. John Denny is a preferred walk-on from Wazoo who entered the Ooh. transfer portal and came to Idaho. Possible he's just prefer walking on Idaho. We don't know, but he's not announced by Idaho. The other one like that I would maybe for those on the board or just those that follow along, I wouldn't put too much I wouldn't put too much panic into like the extra like there's you said three to four more and we have six right now. I wouldn't put too much stock into it at this moment. I think for someone maybe like a Tristan or a Luke or a I don't know if Tommy's a walk on or not, but for say just like for just keep it simple and say Tristan and Luke and Nico for that for those three. Yeah. I would say probably they might be gray shirts. I wouldn't put too much salt. I wouldn't put too much into it right now. Maybe wait. I wouldn't say wait, but I would guess maybe they're probably potential gray shirts right now. Yeah, because Tommy Hauser. Mm-hmm. Uh, announced today he was committed right he got offer today and committed to us today which makes me think that's a gray shirt um john denny i don't think can gray shirt yeah Uh, i think so i look at this list right there's there's three to four more um i'll go with three because there's a fourth one that we'll end the show with on rumors and let that we'll probably have to bite a bullet here shortly but um just like he'll commit tomorrow to like not what we were saying. Um, Massachusetts or something like that. Yeah. Some random so, Amon Munyer is my one recruit out there that we, I think we absolutely have to go get uh, out of Rathdrum uh, Lakeland High School. He's like a 6'5", 6'6", tight end. I mean, you're you're talking your neck to Dion Watson type. I mean, he's bigger than Dion. Um, more of a true tight end where Dion kind of fluctuated between wide receiver and tight end. 
that is my number one get. You have to go get him. Um, I've been talking to the Weber State guys that they really want him, and they kind of came in later on the scene. We've been talking to him for like two years now. I think they offered in like October. So that's a guy you got to get. And I think you got to show up this class with Idaho. You look, there's a reason the Montana schools are so popular, and it's because they get Montana kids. I see it even down here. Parents that are used to root for Broncos start rooting for the Vandals because they know a kid. You know, they were good friends with, like, uh, you know, whoever that ended up going up there for Nick Romano. I bet you there's a ton of Rocky Mountain people that are now Vandals because they are friends with the Romano family, you know? That's how we start to win back this state a little bit because Boise State, they find the gems. You know, they find the Vanderesches. They find the Dan Goodells. They find these guys. But um, but the what's – Let's be the guy that gets everybody the offer. The fact that we lost, um, I can't remember, the kid out of Homedale whose brother played, now he plays at Boise State and is tearing it up. You know, So I want to see us get more Idaho kids to show up this class, especially with it being kind of a dual class. So I'm 100%. You've got to get Amon Munyer, and I think you got to get Gus Elwell. Um, his brother went to Montana last year. They're Mountain View. Mountain View won state this year, I believe, or went to state. Either way, they were really good. They're always really good. I think that's a get you have to get um, one. He, otherwise, I bet you hands up at Montana, and you can't be losing kids to Montana. Look, at uh, Montana State had got two – how many kids out of Idaho this year? Sean Austin, another kid out of Mountain View. Um, Freaking Bow Casey, not Casey Bauman. Uh, Tucker Rovig is a Mountain View guy. Like we can't be letting the Montana schools come into Idaho anymore and pick our good players. So you got to land Amon Munyon. Mm -hmm. You have to. Uh, I'd like to see us get Gus Elwell. I think that'd also be fun for the little Brown Stein game. Um, then I'm with you. I'd like to see if we Brett Tomasini kind of fits that role of linebacker. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think you gotta get that. You might be able to get him into like a, a DN type, mm -hmm. uh, rushing DN. But um, that's kind of where I'm at. With those, what about another one from? What about another player from Rocky Mountain? The other one, uh, Jordan. Oh, Erickson. Yeah, I do like him. Um, I'm thinking he had. That's one of those ones where we could also do a walk on or something like that. Yeah, that thing. I believe to like CFI. So the competition on him isn't super high. That's why I would like to see him. I'd like to see every Idaho kid. One, if Boise State sends him an offer and you're second, you screwed up. Like whoever's recruiting the area failed. Um, I know, I think most of the Idaho recruiting was Jamie Schultz. And you look at these guys, I think he offered all the right guys. We just haven't had any of them commit. Mm -hmm. It's a weird year in the Valley. One last thing to think about before we break the news, because this just hit me. Problem with these California and the Oregon signings. So that's what, eight of our 14 right now? They're all playing spring football. So yeah. that's scary. It's like, what if they get hurt? Something yeah. to think out not a good could, time you play. could also redshirt them but you don't want to have to do that though yeah you don't want to do it because of an injury yeah because people sometimes never come back from injury so that was something i meant to bring up i said that's a little freaked out no, I, I get i get what you're saying by that the big news is uh we've heard rumblings through some grapevines that there has become a little bit of interest on a denver warren out of st thomas more prep um it should I be the bottom one on the roster, bottom one on the chart. If you need to look at, if you need to bring up his stuff, yeah. So, um, three star recruit, D tackle. I don't want to say Quayshon Buckley because I don't think it's quite Quayshon Buckley esque. But um, I mean, this guy's big. He's powerful. Uh, you just look here at, I mean, the offers he's got. So, oh well, hold on a second. Right, right now. Oh, there Just click on complete list. It should have them all. It only says one offer. <laughs> so something happened. Um, anyways, earlier today we had it. Most of these schools that were on here had offers. So something wonky might have happened. So maybe we shouldn't be talking about it. But uh, anywho, we have word that we, we offered him and he's interested. So – would be a big get. I still think his rating is actually behind some Jays. I didn't look, but just another big guy. If we can get him, it would really mm -hmm. short their class and nail that D line promise uh, that Coach P just made. But that's kind of where I'm at. I like the class. This is two really good classes in a row. Um, and you even pair that, you could say two and a half, because I think 
our, our class transferring into the FCS was surprisingly good for what we were doing, you know? Um, and you look at some of those guys are key contributors now. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, I would say it was a good class, but um, any final takeaways before we send it to the best man in the land? No, I'd say I, no, I, I like the class. It's good. And I think they're going to be able to bring us, to Big Sky Championship glory and the play and play and success in the playoffs. Yeah. Hey, I've been saying this that 2021 was our year. That was because I thought <laughs> um, that would be when Caleb Jordan took over. We'll probably still have Beaudry, but I'm getting very, 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 very confident in Beaudry. Mm -hmm. like we've talked about it. We might be set at quarterback for six years now. Like, very mm -hmm. nice luxury to have. Um, very happy we're here. 2021, this is going to be a big exhibition season. There's going to be a lot of moving pieces. We'll get more into it when the season gets close. It won't be pretty. We'll probably lose games we should win and win a game we shouldn't. But when fall rolls around and basically this entire core of this team is back, seriously, Dark Horse, Big Sky Championship. And Mike Beaudry could be the next Kevin Thompson or one of these guys that comes in out of nowhere and they're like Jake Nehermeyer and be like, holy crap. The Vandals have the best quarterback in the conference. So, and then we're just following it. We'll be like Eastern when they lost Gabrud and they just followed it up with EB3. Um, the, the big sky is not ready for Caleb Jordan. That's why we're waiting. <laughs> and they're not ready for Mike Boatry either. With that, it is time for the best band in all the land, the Sound of Idaho, to play us out. Go Vandals. Go Vandals. <laughs>